Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. So, do you need big hands for playing bass? Well, I've had a few students in the past that thought they might have problems in that area. Some of them had small hands and felt that they couldn't stretch the fingers out enough to play comfortably, or they had problems because of past injuries. Fused bones, damaged tendons, ligaments, things like that. Well, the good news is, none of these problems need to be a hindrance in playing bass guitar. We all have different physiologies and issues and we simply have to adapt our technique to overcome whatever hurdles we're going to face. And this is why it frustrates me when people try to teach in a rigid, one-size-fits-all way. It can very much be a case of, you play bass like this, this is proper technique, and if you can't do it, then it's your problem and maybe you should try something else, like knitting. Now, that's obviously a stupid way to look at pretty much anything in life, and to be honest, I can't imagine that there's too many bass teachers out there that would say something like that. It's more likely to come from the actual student. It's easy to develop a defeatist attitude when you see other bass players on stage or in lessons playing something a certain way, and no matter what you do, you just can't seem to get it. Your hands just seem physically incapable, and it can be a very deflating or demoralizing experience. So, let's get to the crux of the biscuit. If you have small hands or you find a stretch too wide to deal with, you need to look at the three Ps. Posture, pivoting, and position shifts. So, first of all, posture. Now, I don't just mean posture in terms of how you stand. I mean everything. How you hold your arms, your hands, your fingers. Posture can be so important in maximizing the stretch that you naturally have. So, if you're sat down, Place the base on your left leg so the body is between your legs rather than on the right leg. More like a classical or flamenco guitarist. Then angle the neck upwards at more of a 45 degree angle and you should instantly feel more comfortable with the bigger stretches because you're in a much more relaxed posture and you don't have to you know, contort your body and dip down to get in there and stretch your hand out. Next, when you stand up, be sure that your base is in exactly the same position that it was when you were sat down. What's the point in practicing one way while you're sat and then changing everything when you stand up? Adjust your strap length to keep that position the, sh uh, the same. Then you can also try raising the neck up to that 45 degree angle again and as before, that should help with your stretch. Next, you want to lay your fingers flat. If I hold my hand out and stretch the fingers out, you can see the natural stretch there between the first and fourth fingers. It won't go any further than that. Then if I curl the fingers in, look at the difference between the span. You can see that it becomes reduced when I curl the fingers. So, in order to maximize that stretch when you're playing, you want to flatten the fingers out rather than curling them in. So now I want you to take that hand at full stretch and then lay it flat on the base. Now don't lay the thumb down yet and remember what I said about raising the base neck. So if it's more up at a diagonal 45 degree angle like this, you'll be able to hold the hand a lot easier to the base like that. But if I was to bring it down horizontal, you can see there it's really difficult to hold that position like this. The elbow's got to come in and, you know, your body all starts to contort. Whereas, raise the neck, take that hand like this, and then just lay it down, and it's a lot, lot easier. So, once you've done that, then just take the thumb and then just bring it down onto the back of the neck. And that's pretty much the optimum stretch that you're going to get. Hold it out like that, bring it down, tuck that elbow in, then put the thumb on the back of the neck. Now, the thumb position is also really important because that can limit the stretch too. The more towards this E string edge we are with the thumb, and the less of a stretch we can make. The further down towards the G string edge, and the wider the stretch we can make. Now, you shouldn't have to put that thumb near the G string edge all the time because that'll just get uncomfortable. It's just whenever you need to stretch the fingers out more. Raise that neck and bring it more towards that edge. Don't be too rigid with the thumb. You don't want to be keeping it locked into one supposedly correct position all the time. Be fluid with it and adaptable. Move it wherever's gonna work for the line that you're playing. So, now let's just try playing a very simple one finger per fret pattern across the strings from the fifth fret. So, we're gonna start on the A fifth fret of the E string, played with the first finger, and then we're gonna work up the frets five, six, seven, eight, with the fingers one, two, three, four. Simple. And when you play up to that fourth finger, 
You want to press down each of the uh, each of the frets in turn, so they're all held down once you get to that fourth finger. So I'm not taking the fingers off like this. I'm holding them all down in turn. Then move on to the A string, five, six, seven, eight. D string, five, six, seven, eight. And then the G string, five, six, seven, eight. And if you use the tips that I've just uh, previously mentioned, you should feel that that's a little bit of less of a stretch. So remember what I said, get that thumb down in the back, raise the neck a little, and you should feel that stretch a little easier. And just as a comparison, try playing it with the neck raised and then try lowering into a more horizontal pattern and you'll feel that it's a little bit tougher on the hands. Okay? Next we have pivoting. Now this is simply a way of moving the hand around the neck while staying anchored to one spot with the thumb. We simply pivot the thumb to make the jumps. So place the thumb in the back of the neck around the seventh fret and then I want you to play a C at the fifth fret of the G string. And that's with the first finger, okay? So we've got the thumb there, just a little bit further up, just under the seventh fret or sixth fret. Then we're gonna play the F at the 10th fret of the G string with the fourth finger, okay? So we have C and then F. Now you can see that if I played, if I tried holding the C down and then playing the F, that's, that's a big stretch. I can just about make it, uh, but you know, it's pretty tough. So what we can do is pivot the thumb like this so that we start with the thumb kind of aiming pretty much towards my head playing the C there, and then we just rotate the hand, so pivoting the thumb there, so that the thumb is then pretty much aiming down the neck. I mean, you could eventually aim it right down the neck like that, but you usually don't have to go that far. So we start with the thumb like this, and then we just pivot it round like that. So we play the C, then pivot, and we can get that F. So we're not having to move around we're not having to, you know, we're not having to move the whole hand and we're not having to make that stretch. It's simply a very small pivot. So we can now jump quite a long way while still staying in one place on the back of the neck. And if I take it to an extreme, I could potentially take that C there at the fifth fret of the G string and then pivot all the way around, you know, if I stretch the hand out quite a lot, to play the C an octave higher at the 17th fret. So the thumb is in exactly the same place, I've not moved the hand, but I've managed to make an octave jump there on one string. Now that's obviously a bit extreme, and it's just as an example, but if we can potentially jump a full octave, then a small jump from C to F should be really easy. And we can also pivot between the other fingers as well. So let's try a different line. Let's try C, D, E, F sharp. So this is going to be the frets 5, 7, 9, and 11. And we're using the fingers 1, 2, 3, 4, all in turn. So we've got C, D, E, F. Now, obviously, if I was to try and stretch that whole thing, I just couldn't do it. It's like a huge stretch, you know, between each finger. Way too difficult. But if I've got that thumb there just under that 7th fret, very, very simple. And I'm not moving. Still got that thumb in anchored in the same place. Now, one thing that you do need to pay attention to when you're making these kind of jumps is your note duration. It's really, really easy when you're jumping to start playing more staccato and cutting the notes short. You know, so we want to try holding those note durations for as long as we can to make them a little bit more fluid and legato. So, if we take that C again at the fifth fret of the G string and then play the F, 10th fret, try holding for two beats each. So we have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and try holding each of the notes for the full duration. So leading right up to the next note. One, two, one, two. Okay, so we're not cutting the note off. We don't have this, you know, as an extreme example. It's full duration. One, two, one, two. And the key to doing that is to leave the jump late. So don't jump until the actual next beat. So one, two, one. 
Okay, so I jump on the one. One, two, one. One, two, one. You can see I'm jumping only when the next note is required. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it's all about speed of movement. So that's posture and pivoting. Now we just have position shifts. Now this is where we move the whole hand and thumb around the neck. And this is the key to playing bass with really small hands. We don't even have to try to make any stretch at all. We just move the whole hand. So let's have a look at the more comfortable stretch of three frets. When we try to hold a one finger per fret position down this lower area, it can be unnecessary strain on the hand. So try playing a simple F octave down here first fret E string and then third fret D string and just remember all the tips that I gave you about posture you know if you have any problems even getting that raise the uh, raise the neck a little bit bring the thumb a little bit further back and just try playing that simple F octave okay so once you've got that octave pattern just relax the fingers don't press anything down okay so we're just in position that's our hand position that's all we need try moving that fourth finger onto the A string and the E string as well. Just move it around a little bit, just experiment, just get used to that position. And then try moving the whole hand with the thumb up and down the neck and just try and keep that physical position, okay? So don't worry if you can't hold, you know, naturally, you know, stress-free that th uh, three fret span. You can bring it, you know, shorten it up a little bit if you want. It, we're just going for a complete lack of stress and a very relaxed hand position, okay? So you get into that position, whatever it is, and then you just move up the neck holding that position. Now don't worry about holding an octave position all the way up because once you get up here, your hand is going to be getting scrunched up a little. Just keep that hand in that position and move it up and you'll find that once you get up around this 12th fret, the hand is naturally then in a one finger per fret position. You know, we've got the a span of four frets there instead. So now let's try playing a two octave F major arpeggio starting at this F down at the first fret. So the pattern looks like this. Okay, so this is a notoriously difficult fingering because of the stretch involved. So I'll just very quickly run through the notes. So the F major arpeggio is the notes F, A, and C. So we're playing it in two octaves. So we have F, A, C, F, A, C, and then up to the F again at the second octave. So the uh, frets there are first fret, then fifth fret of the E string. So that's the F and the A. Then we have C, third fret of the A string. Then we move to the D string and play the third fret and the seventh fret. So that's F and A again. Then we move up to the C at the 5th fret of the G string. And then we move up to the F at the 10th fret of the G string. Okay, so we're using the fingering 1st and then 4th on the E string. Then we play with the 1st finger again for the C. Then 1st and 4th for the F and the A. Then 1st and 4th, okay? And then back down. Okay, so that's the two octave F major arpeggio. So if you try stretching for each of the notes in there, that's a pretty tough line. You know, that's going to be much, much more difficult than the majority of bass lines that you ever have to play. So what we're going to do is just use the position shifts that we've just looked at, a nice relaxed hand, and just move the hand as we work up through it. So we start at the F. Just play that with the uh, first finger, and we've got the hand just in that three fret span there, just nice and relaxed. Then we move up to the A, fifth fret of the E string, and we just simply shift the whole hand. Okay? So I'm not stretching at all, I'm just moving it. And you don't really have to move that far. So then we play first uh, finger for the C there, third fret of the A string. Then, again, we don't have to move. We've got the first finger for the F there, third fret of the D string. And then, once again, we just simply shift the hand up to that seventh fret of the D string. Okay, so, so far we have F, A, C, F, A. Then we have the C again, so we don't have to move for that. And then we move up to the F there, tenth fret of the G string. And again, we just simply shift the hand. That's all. And we're playing with the fourth finger there for that. So, very slowly, we have F, A, C, F, A, C, 
F. And then when we come down, exactly the same thing, just position shifting. Okay, so there's no stretching involved at all. I've just got the hand very relaxed. So once again, we're going to need to concentrate on note duration and wait right up to that next note before we make the shift. The speed of the shift is really important. You know, we don't need big hands, but we do need to make up for that with speed and fluidity. So once again, let's try working up and down through that arpeggio, but we're going to play each note for two beats, and then we're not going to make any shift at all until we get right on that third beat. So one, two, one, two. One, two, 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 one, two. So there, there's no stretching at all. The hand is very, very relaxed. I'm just simply making these basic position shifts. If you really want to see how small a stretch you can get away with, just try playing up and down through that arpeggio with one finger. So. Okay, so it's possible just with one finger. You just have to make sure that the shifts are nice and quick and fluid so that the note durations, you know, each note leads into the next. It's that that makes the difference. So again, we don't need big hands. That's one of the biggest stretches that you're ever going to encounter on bass and we're playing it with one finger. It's an extreme example, but if we can play that arpeggio in that way, simple smaller bass lines and scales are much, much easier to handle. So just remember those three Ps, posture, pivoting, and position shifting. And if this helps you out at all, just remember to leave a comment below. Do you have any other problems that uh, might stop you from comfortably playing bass? Again, if you do, let us know in the comments and I'll try and help you out. Okay, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if it's helped and subscribe to the YouTube channel for hundreds more lessons. I release a lesson every Friday and I have playlists devoted to pretty much every area of playing. Also check out the website talkingbass.net where all the videos are organized on the lesson map for ease of navigation. You can download the lesson material for each video and if you subscribe to Talking Bass for free, you'll gain access to the members area where you'll find a ton of free practice resources and eBooks for download. Okay? I'll see you later.